Have a seat, firstborn. Okay, so what is an educator to do if we're trying to teach the principles of radiometric dating, but we don't have students with great math skills like algebra level or higher um, to use those decay constants and, and putting it in that fancy algebraic equation. Well, what we can do for the hands-on, because how do you make that hands-on? Well, we could make biscuits with BBs in them so we're going to have one color BB represent parent isotope of a decay series and the other color represent the daughter isotope of a decay series. And it's kind of fun because I have my daughter here with me to help out. Um, should we make the silver ones the parents and the copper ones the daughters? So yeah. these will be yours. These will be mine. Um, these are unstable like a parent isotope. And the daughter isotope hopefully will be more stable than the parent. That works. Okay. Now, I'm not going fancy here. These are not to be eaten. In fact, we're going to mix these up with just water and flour. And we're going to roll them out. Well, you'll see. Uh, but then we're going to sprinkle a few BBs of different varieties in there. And, and so the student will get a, an extra um, hardened, because we're going to over bake these on purpose. Maybe we'll get creative. What do you think, daughter isotope? Maybe. <laughs> do you think we should uh, make them into some interesting shapes? Like maybe something like the shape of a zircon crystal or perhaps a chicken bone or something? Haven't we done that in the past? I don't With remember. We've done this a few times, but it's been a few years since I taught this. I had a little stint as a social studies teacher before being called up to high school level. I feel like I was promoted, but I'm not sure. Way. Promoted or punished? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but this works. So here, let's go ahead and start mixing up this stuff. All right, so we got it kind of mixed up now, and I'm gonna put a little more dough, or dough, flour, make a bigger area here. We don't really wanna push into that crack, but we might need the space. We can get rid of that and that. All right, and I remember, we're not worried about eating these things. Now what you're gonna do, daughter isotope, is you're gonna reach in and grab a, hand, a small handful of flour, Put it on both of your hands over this so your hands are coated in it and so the top of that and now you're going to put just mush it into a ball don't squeeze your fingers into it just push it into a ball just push it two hands into a ball just why are you lifting it just push it into a ball push down i am <laughs> People are probably like, why don't you show her? Yeah, well, you're actually, you're getting it now. That, that looks pretty good. Oh, what do I know? It's not like I'm a baker. The right, let me try, let me try. Sticky. Yeah, a lot of gaps, so you gotta push it in. And once we get it on there, we can knead it some more. So we're gonna take it. Ta-da! Now we might have to do another batch, because I'm looking at, what did I say, 55 mm -hmm. biscuits, because I've got, what, 160 students. So we got it flipped. Put a generous coating of flour on there so it doesn't stick to our hands. And then we're just gonna kinda flatten it out and start. Probably need to knead it more, but I don't care. These aren't gonna be pretty biscuits. And whenever you review, oh no, we got isotopes all over the table. Why are you moving the BBs already? All right, open this up. We want it pretty thin, so we're gonna go lengthwise here. Whoa, we're already getting some isotopes in the, the dough. Now my students, every year I've done this before, 
they always think they want to eat them. And I tell them, I'm like, there's BBs in there. You're going to wreck your teeth. And they're usually overbaked. So. Yes, yes. The, we, <laughs> but, you know, you get some, usually it's the boys, and they want to be silly. I Look, I can't blame them. I was a goofball when I was their age, too. Anyway, I might still be. Um, so just a little bit more flour on there. We should use cookie cutters this we, year. We could, but it's so much easier just to use a glass. Could you grab one, please? And um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a bunch of, of BBs, a nice mix, and I'll fold the whole thing over. So I'll put it all in half, fold it over, push it down in again. It kind of makes them sure that they stay in there. So let's do that. Um, you grab some of yours. I'll grab some of mine. And we're just going to kind of randomly dump some BBs around. And we're going to be generous. Try to stay mostly on this side. I, oh, you know what? Yeah, do the whole thing. Do the whole thing. Maybe I'll keep most of mine on this side and you keep most of yours on that side, okay? Mm -hmm. That's a good idea, actually. This is gonna work out. You'll, you'll see what we're doing. It's, like, we, we're pros at this, obviously. I mean, everybody makes BB biscuits. We've just got our own way of doing it, right? All right, I feel, whoa, whoa, I almost lost it. Uh, I feel like that might be enough. You can never have too many isotopes in your BBs. Right sure. We don't want them to be evenly distributed. Because then we'll have too many that are like one to one. So one half parent to total isotopes. Which means all of them are about one half life old. We don't want that. We want a nice mix. And then where we see there's not a couple, we can just dribble a couple. You see a couple spots that are a little low? Drip of the fluff on there. And then before we fold it over, we'll just roll them in. Oh, over here. There, 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 there. There's a few spots that are a little low. Oh gosh, we're getting a little crazy with the daughter isotopes. Crazy daughter. Right here. There's like none here. Alright. Couple there, couple there, couple there. Not coming right, out. Just dimple them right down in there. Set them into you know, some of these are going to be bones, some of these are going to be zircon crystals or whatever. We're pretending, it's fun. I'm going to roll them thin now. And the nice thing about having the BBs in there now is I won't be able to go thinner than BB thickness. All right, cool. Now let's see if I can do this without completely. Ooh, do we have a something? Do we have a something? Yes, we do. Uh-oh, tore one off. This isn't going to work well. <laughs> hey! All right, we lost some BBs over there and a whole bag of flour. It's okay, that one was empty. So now we've got it flipped. That worked, you know, it was ugly, but it Except worked. Except now there's going to be BBs scattered around the house Just the a few, week. just a few, daughter isotope. You're supposed to say, okay, fine, parent isotope. Oh, was I? The joke's not really good, anyway. That's okay, though. All right, so now we're going to roll this flat-ish. Reference to my other channel. All right, cool. We have a cup. Start pressing them. Now, don't waste the fringe. You do that, I'll, I'll start, too. Oh, stop. We'll, we'll, we'll time-lapse this part. All right, hold off. Okay, I've already stepped on one BB. It's not fun. I'm in socks here. Um, so we've got some scraps that she is putting together. I told her not to, um, but we're gonna get a little flour for our hands here. A little flour for your hands because some of them are a little sticky, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our shapes, okay? Look at this one. It's already kind of shaped like a femur. So we can just kind of elongate this and kind of make a bulge on each end like a, like a leg bone, right? And then, good. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's kinda <laughs> ish. Um, and then we can make the other ones kind of shape them like a crystal if we can. Can we like put a angle on the ends? Not really. That's okay. 
And we're just going to do that for all of them, make some of them into long, like, crystalline type shapes. We're a little short, but not that much, so a couple of these full-size ones, I'm going to rip them in half. Okay? Because we're close enough that I don't want to make another batch. So we'll just make them into interesting pieces. Uh, if they're a really different looking piece, we can be like, hey, it's a, a shard, right? Or, you know, whatever. We, we're pretending. We could leave some of them the shape that they are. That's fine too. They aren't really sticking. Okay. Together. Okay. That's okay. As long as they hold together in general, they can get pulled right back apart by my students tomorrow in the BB Biscuit lab. So, yeah, that's a thing. We could, we could make a really long one like this and be like, oh, it's a giant earthworm or it's a small snake, right? I mean, I mean it could. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right, let's time lapse this too. So now it's time to tray these things. Uh, count as you put them on yours, I'll count them as I put them on mine so we know how many we have. All right, so I have 34 on these. 18. 18 was 34 and 18. Why is this still not put together? I don't know. How many did you have on there? 14 on this one. Where'd you get 18 from? Were you mixing I was, those? Because I was counting, counting your, the ones that I put on your Yeah, track. this is what happens when you don't have a plan ahead of time. Well, you said count mine. <laughs> so yeah, but then mine. you started putting yours on my tray, my well, second tray. Well, I didn't know you'd count those. It's just great bonding. <laughs> Where's where this coming from? <laughs> On the table. You're supposed to put the scraps to So we, now we've got extras. That's excellent. That's actually really good. Why do you have so much, you know, we're not eating these, right? If they get stuck together, we just prime them apart. So throw. Oh, there's the cool shapes. Cool shapes. All right, so make a little bit of room for your extras. And now let's count. I'll count these two trays. You only count your tray. Oh, let's wow. try this. I have 39. 17. Oh yeah, that should be enough. What's 39 and 17? Uh, <laughs> She's in AP classes. So anyway, so I said 39 plus 10 would be 49. Stop, hang on, I'm doing it. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 56. 56. We wanted between 55 and 60. And usually I have a couple students that are absent that day, which is unfortunate because they miss out on this. But that's okay, I guess. They'll be able to watch the video. See? Part of the reason I video stuff. All right. Started videoing back during COVID. Um, and, and now I've just kind of kept doing it. That's, that's what you do. Mm, that's or that's why you wear an uh, 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 apron. Right. Don't you have an apron that you made specifically for your channel? For the other channel. Oh, okay. Get it straight. Okay. Um, anywho, we're ready to put this in the oven. Normally, you'd make biscuits at what? 375 or 400, somewhere in there. We're going to crank this puppy to 450 to start with a little nice finish at 500. I mean, basically just crisping the heck out of them.
daughter isotope. Yours can go on the bottom rack. I made a fish. Huh? I made a fish. She made a fish. Hey, you can carbon date a fish. All right. Let's get this mess. Yeah, started at 450. And we're going to bake this at an appropriate 20 minutes. No, like two hours. Yeah. These are going to be like rocks for real. Ain't no kid going to want to eat these. How did they turn out? Well, we threw them in here this morning after they cooled all night. And this is about what they look like. Um, yeah, you wouldn't want to bite into that. <laughs> So we brought uh, an assortment of, of objects to include my hitch receiver, or my hitch, uh, I, I guess we can like just crush with. Um, I've got the pin, and I've got a brand new hammer I just had in my truck, I didn't know. I, so now the students are gonna wanna just wah, but then you'll have stuff flying everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna wanna do is like have maybe partners hands around it while you gently, gently and then as the BBs come out you can pick them and, and set them aside separating them into either the ah the daughter or parent isotopes so we're just gonna crush this guy up there, see there goes one and we gotta find it oh gosh it's one of the daughters so we'll keep crushing this up But I tell you, I, I wouldn't have thought so, but this is the best thing ever. It's like, it's got a pivot point and you can hold your hands around whatever you're crushing and then you, you can get your weight into it. I, this is, um, I should go get, oh, I should go get the other one. I've got, this is a spare. Um, and I think it, this one may be out of the van. And for whatever reason, it was sitting in the truck. Well, I've got another one in the hitch receiver on the truck. Anyway, you get them all pounded up. If there's something big enough that a BB could be hiding, you know, crush it. Well, that one went flying. Nothing in it. So the kids have a lot of fun with this because, you know, it's a little messy. Anyway, I think that's about it. Yep, that's too small. All right. Now we get to the math of it. How many do we have? Oh. How many of each? And I'll go put it on the board. Five parents. I've got five parents, okay. We'll say five P for parents. And how many of the daughter isotopes? 11. 11 daughter isotopes. All right, let's turn this camera around. We'll go to the board. And uh, let's say we're doing U, uh, uranium-235 to lead-207 is our decay series. So this would be, as I knock things off the board here, this would be U-235, and this would be lead-PB-207. All right? And we're going to put this in a fraction of parent to total isotopes in the sample. So we're, we're assuming this is reduced down. Obviously, we probably would have found way more in a zircon crystal in an actual spectrometer and all that good stuff. So um, five is still gonna be our numerator because it is the number of parent isotopes reduced. And then we're gonna get the total, so 16. We're gonna have five sixteenths as our uh, fraction that we start with. So what we have to do is find where this goes in our chart of known things. But our chart of known things isn't even finished um, daughter, I don't know where I want you to stand because I'm going to be all over the place. Wait, you could do it. You, she could do it. Well, um, right. After one half-life, so in our chart, one half-life for uh, uranium, it's not in billions either, it's in millions. Go ahead and write millions there. I'll, I'll just direct. I'll just stand over here and direct the action. Uh, 710 million years is the half-life of uranium-235. So, yep, put 710. And you don't have to put millions because it's already up at the top. Very good. Uh, after two half-lives, what would it be then? Are you times it by 0.5? No, by two. 
So you have, um, you have one half-life after two half-lives. What's 710 times two? You know what? I'm not going to give you the calculator. Oh. 710 plus 710 or 710 times two. Either way, we'll get the right answer. <clears throat> so 14, 20, which would also be read as 1.42 billion. Uh, and then you add another 710. Just add another 710 to the 1420. I mean, you can do it every way you want. <laughs> Three. I know. 21. There you go. And then add another 710. Or multiply it by four instead. Either way. So we have our chart once again complete. Um, now, so where does our fraction go, daughter? Oh. Yeah, five sixteenths compared to right here. probably right. What do you mean probably? There's no probably. There's comparative fractions, or we could convert that to a decimal and compare it to those fractions that have been converted to decimals. Because oh, I forgot about kinda, that. Yeah, yeah, we kind of. It's been a couple years since you did this math. Okay, that's fine. So. Okay, here's another way you can look at it. What's half of 16? Eight. Eight. Is five greater than or less than eight? No. It, don't, don't do anything yet. Is five greater than or less than eight? Less. Less than, so we know it's less than a half. What's half of eight? Four. Is five greater than or less than four? Greater than. Greater than, so we know it's more than a quarter. So it's between a half and a quarter. So our fraction goes right in between a half and a quarter. Which also means, sure, which also means that our sample is between 710 and 1420 million years old. Does that make sense? So on this side of a number line, put a line right here, and that's going to be your half. Label it one half at the top. And at the bottom of it, label it 710 million years. And then draw your number line across to like over here. And it'll be a quarter and 1,420 million years. Very good. And then the next step, if you don't remember, is to get a common denominator between 4, 16, and 2. And fortunately, what do we already have? We already have a common denominator. Because oh, yeah. 4 can go into 16 and 2 can go into 16. Very good. In fact, if we wanted to, well, no, we can't because it's already. All right. So, um, Make these sixteenths. So what is a quarter of sixteen? Oh. Four sixteenths is a quarter of sixteen. Right? Yeah. Okay. And a half of sixteen is eight sixteenths. Now, we have four sixteenths and eight sixteenths. Between the difference between the two is how many sixteenths? Four. Four. Because 8 minus 4 is 4. Um, you need to make four increments of time, four chunks of time on here. So you're going to have three dashes that you're going to add. One, two, three. Very good. So we have one, two, three, four chunks of time. And we're going to pretend that they're all the same length, right? But they don't, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. They're going to represent, though, four even increments of time. How much total time is on our timeline? You don't have to do the math. Yeah, I do. Each, in between each of these is one half-life, isn't it? Oh, so it's 710. Is one, 710. No, 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 don't put it there. The whole length is 710 million years. Because 1420 minus 710 is 710. So the whole thing is 710 million years. Good. And we just chopped it into four pieces, yes? So do that mathematically. So what she's doing now is she's going to divide 710 by 4 the hard way. What do you mean the hard way? Well, it's not that hard. But by hand. She's you not using a calculator. You don't want me to use a calculator. She's, I don't. I want you to use that noggin and the, the bits and things that are in it.
All right, that's far enough. Or is that, that's, that's the end anyway, mm -hmm. maybe? Okay, so uh, is that 177? Yeah. Like you've got it blocked off so much, it looks like 197. Anyway, so 177.5, each increment is 177.5 million years. All right, cool, you don't have to mar mark all of them, but we could, we could mark all of them. Um, now what we need to do is to place our fraction on the number line. Where does 5 sixteenths go on our 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 sixteenths? Mm -hmm. Yep, goes right there. Which means we're one increment away from being 1,420 million years old. So what math would we do to find the age of our sample? We're almost done. Why are we adding? Oh, you subtract. Yeah. So if it was all the way to the end of the number line, it would be 1,420 million years old, but we're not quite there. We're one increment away. So we're going to subtract one increment, which she said earlier was 177.5 million years. Did we borrow incorrectly? I, I lined it up wrong. <laughs> 1,420 minus check her math with a calculator. My head's tired. But that does look right, just glancing at it. 1420 minus 177.5. 1242.5. Very good. Very close. Close enough. What Something happened know? or I put it in the calculator wrong. Whatever. Um, <clears throat> So our sample, and we usually circle our answer and like point whatever, put it, put it somewhere that lets the teacher know that we had it. She's double checking my checking of her work. Um, but yeah, so 1.2435 billion years old, or we could just call it 1243 and a half billion year, or 1243 and a half million years old is our sample based on the um, parent and daughter isotopes that we pulled out of our zircon crystal or whatever it is containing uranium-235 to lead decay series.